What's up, it's your boy Spectre here. Today I'm gonna show you how to create your own star field in Blender. First things first, open up Blender. Then remove everything from the scene. Hit A on your keyboard, then the delete key. Then do shift A, then mash, and then go over to circle. And then here on the left, you're gonna see a, a little pop-up window. Select it and then hit 10, then enter, then get closer, hit tab, and then go over to select, and then select checker deselect, and then hit S, then scale up, and create a star, then hit A, and then F to fill, and then E to extrude, and you can make it kind of thick, then hit tab, and then on the rotation, you can do 90 degrees. And then now we can zoom out a little bit and then we can actually drag this along. So go over to move. And then you can actually move about four squares over here. So it's like one, two, three, four. Then again, do shift A and then go to mesh. And now we're gonna make another star. Then go to circle. And this time let's do eight vertices. Then hit tab. And then over here where it says select, check, check already select again, and then hit S and then scale up. And we're going to make a diamond star, then hit A, and then F to fill, then hit E to extrude and make it thick as well. Then hit tab again. And then now let's select 90 degrees over here. Then select your star and then scale it up by hitting S on your keyboard and make it kind of big. Then select the other star and then do the same. Hit S and then make sure to match the other size. Now let's add some material to this so we can go over to material properties and then select this tab here and then select material and then go to base color and then bring it up. And then if you scroll down, go over to emission and then bring it all the way up. And then here on emission strength, we can do 20. Now we can't really see what's happening. So we can go over here to material preview. Then we can go over here to our, our other star and let's select the same material. So the same thing, go to browse material to be linked and then select material. And now they're both the same. Now select one of the stars then go to object properties now we can bring up our timeline and then here on one of the stars select it and then on the first frame make sure to add a keyframe under rotation z enter the keyframe now let's go over and let's add 500 to our timeline and then go to the last frame and then input 720 and then hit a keyframe and then if we hit the space bar it should look something like that now let's join these two together by selecting them both and then hit control and the letter j on your keyboard and then it should have some sort of spin like this and it's okay if it looks this way we're gonna fix it in a bit now let's go over here to modifier properties and then add a modifier then select array and then now let's line it up and then let's match the same distance as the other two so here on the count let's do 25 and then on the factor x you can hold shift and then drag it with the mouse and then make sure you input those same spaces which were four squares if you go here you can see one two three four so it's pretty much on point and it's okay if it's not perfect it doesn't have to be then go to add modifier and add another array and then scroll down and then here make sure to increase the counts to 25. then here on factor x input zero and then now we're gonna actually change the z factor so the, with the same shift and then hold and then drag it out and then here we're gonna add the same four spaces. So here just count 
So it's one, two, three, and four. So we're a little bit off. There you go. And then now we have a star field. So if we hit space, you can see that it rotates, but we wanna spin them individually. So now we gotta make sure that we apply our modifiers. So select this tab here, and then on the drop down, hit apply. And the same for the other one. Then hit tab on your keyboard, then hit P, and then this window's gonna pop up and then select buy loose parts. Then hit tab again, then right click, then set origin to origin to geometry, and then go to object, go to transform, and then select randomize transform. And you're gonna see a window pop up on the left. Select it, and then here on the location Z, you can increase it. I'm gonna set it to 100. And then you can randomize the seed. You can actually just change this to whatever, as long as you can see some of this randomness. I'll do 100 as well. Now if you hit the space bar, they actually spin as well. Then we can go over here to our render properties. And then here you can change the render engine to cycles or leave it at EV. And then set the device to GPU compute if you're choosing cycles. Make sure to enable denoise here. And then max samples do 300. And then here on the noise threshold, you can do 0.5. And then here on your max samples, 300 as well. Now let's go to output properties. And here, this is going to be the resolution for the camera. I'm going to leave it at 1080p for YouTube. And then here on frame rate, you can change this over to 30. And then here on resolution, you can also do the opposite for TikTok or social media in general. Now here on output, select the folder icon. And this is going to take you to your default folder for Blender. And you can just right click anywhere and then select new folder. And I'm going to name this Starfield YT for YouTube. And then select it. And then hit accept. And then here in file format, you can do FFmpeg video. Go to encoding. And then go to container. And then select MPEG4. And then here on your output, you can select high quality. Now we can go back to our render properties. And then go down to where it says film. And then select transparent. And then now let's go over here to world properties and then select color and then actually bring this all the way down. And then we can go over here to our rendered preview. We can see what's happening exactly. Now it might be a little bit choppy, but that's because we're in cycles right now. And then if you go here to our material preview, you can kind of see like what exactly you're going to see on your final render. Now what we want is we want to enter a camera inside and we want it to pan around. Now you can select seven on your number pad and then you can see the field. And we want to enter a camera somewhere in the middle. So let's select our cursor here. And then now let's select somewhere here in the middle. Now, anytime we do actually go in here, and we pretty much set anything, it's gonna be right in the middle. So let's do Shift A and let's enter a camera. Then if we hit the period on our number pad, you can see our camera is right here. Now let's go to object properties and let's start arranging the camera here. And let's set this to 90. Now make sure to select select box after placing your camera and everything that way you're not moving your cursor around somewhere by accident now select zero on your number pad or you can also right click on your camera and then do select active camera and we can do a spin a normal spin here like like that like a 360 but we want to kind of give it more of a dynamic feel besides just kind of doing a regular 360. 
So you can do seven on your number pad. And then kind of zoom out. And then do shift A. And then select curve and then select circle. And then hit S. And you can scale the, the circle back. And then continue to make it bigger. And then we can also do a tilt to this circle. So here on the rotation, we can either do a minus or a positive. I'll do a 9.9 .9 or just a 10. And then select your camera and then select the circle and make sure to shift select it and then right click and then go over to where it says parent and then select follow path. Now you can select the camera and then get closer to it by hitting period on your number pad. And we can also make sure that we are aligning it. Then what you could do is make sure you select the camera and then you're actually getting it closer to the actual circle. And it doesn't have to be specifically in the same distance. Stay selected here on the camera, then go over here to your constraint properties and then select add object constraint and then select track two. And then here you can select any star that's around nearby your cursor. I'll do this one and then just leave it as is. Then you can hit zero on your number pad. And then if you hit the space bar, you can see that it's following or tracking this star in the middle but actually it's going a little bit too fast so you can select the circle here and then now we can go over to our curve object data properties and then you can select down this drop down where it says path animation and then here in the frames you can play around with it to see which one you like the best i'll do 700 it's going to now make it very slow and then now let's say if you don't like the positioning or anything like that you can mess around with your location settings, but make sure you're selected here on the camera. You can either, you know, bring it up or down. Then after adjusting your camera and the angles towards the stars, um, you can also double check what a frame would look like. Just go over to render and then go to render image. And you can see this is something to expect from your render. And if you notice that maybe like you're lacking some stars over here, you can either change the angles. You can go back and change some of the positioning. Then you can render again and check to see. And here I kind of fixed it. There's more stars in the, in the frame. Now when I'm ready to render, I can just do control and F12. And there you have it guys, that is how to create a star field in Blender. And if this has helped you out in any way, shape or form, please leave a like, comment or subscribe. Also, please make sure to follow my social medias. It is at spectre.3d. Also, I do have a Discord. So if you need any help, either me or one of the members can help you out. Also, you guys were asking me about the dots in my intros, the ones where they're floating. I decided to make my own star field and show you guys how to create it here on Blender. And uh, I do like this one a little bit better. And you can use those for your renders for your Y2Ks as backgrounds. So you can check out some of those and then just add the background yourself. And if you need any help on adding your own custom backgrounds to some of your renders, please check the icon above. And as always, thanks for watching.